I ran marketing departments in corporate America for 10 years and then ran a digital agency for over another 10 years. So I know the roadmap to online success and that formula always includes producing content to share your message from your marketing message to sales and delivery. Hi, I'm Jennifer Neal and you're listening to The Content Toolbox. I believe the secret to finding and creating raving fans online is through you. In building relationships through stories that share who you really are, create genuine, crazy, raving fans that keep begging you to take their money. And on this podcast, we'll be talking strategies, tactics, tips, and more with myself and other industry experts. So buckle up and start your engines, cause it's go time. All right, I'd like to welcome you back to this episode where we have an exciting, exciting guest. I'm super uh, anticipating what we're going to be talking about here. This is uh, my friend Aimee Gusich of Biggity Bomb Mom, and uh, she is going to share with us how she is using content um, actually in every aspect of her business and helping, helping moms getting started in business. Yes. Well, welcome, you. Aimee. Thank you for thank joining you. us. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> All right. Why don't you give us a little bit of your background and kind of how you got where you are today? Yeah. So um, first, thanks for having me on. This is super fun. And I love being able to use this platform to like, you know, chat with other entrepreneurs and mompreneurs and um you know, a long time ago. So I've always been kind of that entrepreneur at heart. Um, I started a while back um, with my own business uh, selling uh, children's clothing. So I went to school for fashion design. I, I studied fashion for a little bit and I started making clothing for my nieces. And I would just take that little clothing line and I would go to like stores. And this is back in 2007-ish is when it really started kind of rolling. And, and then I would just take my little suitcase and I would go to these stores and I would like sell them this, like this little line of clothing. And then you know, and I would come back and I would have to manufacture it. And this is so think about this. This is like kind of pre really Facebook. I didn't have a website. I didn't know any of anything about online marketing. I was just calling up and, and saying, hi, and here's my clothing line. Do you want to you know, buy it? But then as everybody knows, the downturn of the economy came and I had was stuck with all these orders that I had prepaid for. And suddenly everybody had to close their, their doors. That's similar. It's crazy things going on now. Anyways, um, then I had to, I was like, oh my gosh, I have this inventory and I don't have anybody to sell it to. And I started, I like figured out how to make a website on Wix. I was like, I was suddenly I had to become this digital marketing, delve into this online marketing, online e-commerce even. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. And so that kind of was my introduction. And my husband has a business too. He has a local um, window cleaning and pressure washing business. And it was kind of around those same times where he was like, okay, uh, well, we advertise in the yellow pages. Like now I'm totally dating myself, right? So we started it, like advertising in the yellow pages. This is pre Google. And somebody said, you know, you can get found on Google. And I'm like, you can? Like you can rank? I had no idea, right? So then I started going down that rabbit hole and started learning about like, you know, Google AdWords and things like that. And we happened to run across somebody that had a digital marketing agency and he, we hired him to do our local SEO and uh, get us found ranking on Google naturally so that we didn't end up having to pay for all this Google advertising. And that was like, whoa, we can do this. That's so cool. And I started really going down this rabbit hole of learning and, and actually started working with that guy a little bit and starting to introduce clients to him because everybody needed online marketing, right? Like everybody needed local search and, and uh, figuring out how to advertise on, on the internet. And so that's how I started. And that was, oh my gosh, uh, now I've had my agency for almost seven years and um, have, it's just been a really interesting ride learning all things digital all the time. So that's, yeah, that's my background. <laughs> I love it. I could so relate. Uh, yeah, I've had I had my agency for ten years and worked in corporate for ten years before that, and it's like, yeah, I, I remember the yellow pages days. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. And you know, it's funny because when I when I talk to clients and still, I mean, you coming up with content, and we're going to get so into content and advertising and and things like that, it can be so intimidating. But if you just dial it back to that, if you just kind of think like, okay where do I need to go find people 
Yeah. What do I need? What do I need to say to them? That's no different than, okay, back then people looked in the yellow pages to find a business. Now, what are you going to say to them to get them to pick up the phone and call you? <laughs> you know, so it's kind of, it's just that same thing. So I try and like make it very, very simple to everybody that, that is, that I work with. Yeah. And, it, and it's funny because like that, the translation, it is, it's a tough one to actually like learn when you're going through it, when it was all kind of new. And then for people who aren't used to the online world, it's like, it is, it's literally a whole different world. And so there's like a steep learning curve and trying to get people to come yeah. along when they don't know is, it is kind of a tough thing. <laughs> like, how do I email that again? I mean, I, and I totally relate because we were those people. We were the ones that were like, I, I don't know. I didn't know that I could advertise on Google. Like I didn't know. And then, then it was like, oh, okay. What do I need to say to who I'm trying to attract? So then our messaging started to get through that. Even just an example, like as simple as like a local window cleaning and pressure washing business. You know, once we had a website and it was terrible, it was like the most terrible website you've ever seen in your life. Right. But then he was starting to get calls, but then we realized we were attracting the wrong customer. So what we said on that website had to change. So suddenly our message, he, he really sat and thought about who do I want to attract? And of course, you know, his business, his business, we live in Florida. And so we wanted to serve um, these mansions on the ocean, not like, you know, a two bedroom condo, you know, West of 95. We wanted to do these bigger jobs, right, for our staff. Then our messaging had to change. So then it became, okay, what are we saying on our website? What pictures are we showing? How are we portraying ourselves to attract that client? And that was a whole nother learning curve, right? Is about the content that we would put out to attract the right type of person. So that was a whole nother learning curve. And, and that we went through that whole cycle and then finally started attracting our, our ideal client in that business. So yeah, I mean, there's learning curves to this for sure. But if you just think about that framework of like, who am I trying to attract? What are their, I call it the rat method. Um, so it's who do you want? What is the result that they want? What are they trying to avoid the most? And what is their biggest pain point? Oh, I love it. You can wrap it up and you can really like figure out who they are, what the result is, what they're trying to avoid and what their pain point is. That will make creating your content so much easier because you'll understand the messaging that you should be portraying, right? Yep. That's a great acronym. I love that. Thank you. <laughs> so awesome. Thank you. All right. So you went through all of this and experienced it yourself and obviously found success. And then in there founded Biggity Bomb Mom and now you're helping moms. So um, let's talk about like kind of when people are at that place, what's, what's some great ways to get started and some of the lessons that you learned? Well, um, I think my first lesson would be just start because, <laughs> right? I mean, especially I, I get it. I'm, I'm a mom. I have an eight year old son. There's all kinds of barriers that we have, especially as moms, you know, to, we have now it's especially now it's like, Oh, by the way, we have to homeschool a child. <laughs> by the way, we have dinner on the table. We have to clean a house. We have to bring kids to football practice or soccer practice or dance or, or whatever. And there's all these things, all these hats that we wear as women. And I think that my biggest barrier when I first started was like, we prioritize everything else in our lives. It's where are you on your priority list too? Now I go through that same thing. Like I have my clients on my priority list, but where is this new endeavor on my priority list? Right. And, and it's okay to put yourself on your priority list. So I think that would be my first thing. It's like, just go take a step forward, just do something. I don't know. We, uh, that's first start. <laughs> <laughs> it's, and it's such a huge step. Like it's so easy to say, but to actually do is this scary thing. Like there's a lot of mind stuff you got to overcome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then I think my next piece of advice is we have access to all of the type of learning that we possibly could ever want right at our fingertips. So find an expert in what it is that you want to be learning and go learn from them. You know, go buy a course. If you need to figure out, uh, I don't know, copywriting for your web page and, and you can't afford to hire a copywriter yet, or you just need to even learn what that even means, go find a copywriter and start following them and, and, and learn a little bit about that. It's already been done. And don't be afraid that these things have been done. That's great that it's been done. Like, I, I think there's, I meet so many people that are like, 
well, I have this idea, but I feel like it's been done before. And I'm like, well, that's great that it's been done before because that means that somebody wants to buy it, <laughs> you know? So yay, good, good. <laughs> it's a good place to start. <laughs> but find what it is that maybe that thing's missing and be that little bit different, you know? So I think those would just be my like two, go do it and go find somebody that's been doing it and follow what they do. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so common mistakes that maybe you have made or that you've seen others make as they're on this journey. Oh, I've made so many mistakes. I think I've made every mistake. And <laughs> I, I continue to make every mistake. I laugh with you because I too. <laughs> yeah. And that's okay. It's like, great, good. You now, you know, one more way to not do it. <laughs> yes. So I think well, as far as content goes, especially when we were advertising, right, is that I think I wasn't really thinking about what the real result is of what that person wanted. Um, so it was always, and I, and I try and wrap my head around this for every client that I have too, because in my agency, we've done advertising campaigns from everything from oral surgeons to high-end retail to, you know, everybody in between. And so it was always this conundrum, this little challenge of like really having to think about their client and what it is that they want, the result that they want, what do they want to avoid the most, and what is their pain point. And especially whether you're advertising or just introducing your business on social media or whether you're just out there starting to talk to people, um, there's, if you've read Dot Com Secrets, Russell Brunson always talks about cold, warm, and hot traffic. Traffic meaning people, right? So there's people that don't know you and they've never heard of you before. And so your messaging to this person is going to be a lot different than your best friend. So I made a lot of mistakes about trying to like, hey, buy this awesome new coolest thing. It's amazing to somebody who's never heard of me before or never heard of my client before. And then like we would wonder, gosh, why isn't that working? You know, and you realize like, OK, where are these people in their journey to you? So maybe if it's a customer or a potential customer and you sell the solution to I don't know, anything, uh, weight loss. Let's just go there. Okay. Cause that's a super kind of an easy one. And they might know, okay, I would like to get healthy, but I don't know how. And they're probably in a weight loss, obviously uh, really solution aware anyways, because there's a million solutions, but they don't know that that solution is going to work for them. So they don't know about you yet. They don't know about maybe if you're a fitness coach, they don't know about you yet. So they don't know about your solution. So Instead of being like, I'm amazing and I'm, you know, 120 pounds and super, super fit and you need to join me because I'm going to do this. No. So you start educating. So somebody who is over here and they're only aware of their problem, they need to be educated and warmed up. And you can put out content to help educate your, what could be your ideal client and get them to know you through education that you put out. That could be through a podcast. It could be through a blog. It could be through a YouTube channel. It could be through Facebook ads, that videos, in Facebook lives. There's a million ways now to be able to put out content and get start warming up this kind of cold audience. And then once they get to know you, you can the messaging turns to be different, right? That it starts to be like more of a conversation. Like now you can start telling them a little bit more about your offers, uh, inviting them into maybe a Facebook group or inviting them over to wherever. So at first, at a cold audience, it might be, hey, download my free guide or here's five tips to doing X, Y, Z or join my free webinar. Like we're going to do a free class on this because those are really easy points of entry to get somebody to know you. Yep. Um, and then after they've gotten to know you a little bit, you could offer them something a little bit more. So your messaging can get, you know, warmer and warmer, if that makes sense. Absolutely. I mean, and, and I love the way that you just broke that down because we've heard so much, like you have to have a nurture sequence, you have to warm them up, like don't ask them to marry you before you're going to date them. And like, right. but, but when you just put it into context there of, you know, the cold, warm and hot traffic is that or people like yeah. how, how people. aware of you and the, the problem that they have. So when you're really tuned into that and like where they're at on that path, then using that to define the way that you're talking to them yeah, because you have to meet them at the level that they're at. Right. And it's funny. I had a conversation just this morning with a client talking about, about meeting them where the conversation is in their mind at that moment. 
she's a uh, psychotherapist. So she's a therapist. She helps coach people through their problems and issues. And I'm like, okay, well, that's really interesting because how do they find you to begin with? First, there's not a whole lot of people that walk around to their friends saying, well, I have massive problems and can you, can you refer me to somebody? So they're either Googling it or they're sitting on Facebook, like, you know, kind of searching. What is that first piece of thing that you could put out that they would latch onto that would be that first trust factor, you know, that kind of that first thing that they're going to reach out and go, huh, let me learn a little bit more about her. You know, and then as they learn more about her, you build trust, you build, you know, authority or respect, what's going to get them on the phone. And generally that is if they know you, like you and trust you, but you can't know, like, and trust somebody unless you're helping serve them. But I mean, I think that's a really, I know we talk about serving a lot and marketing and things like that and, or in, you know, in the culture that we're, we're in, but it's so true. It's like, if you just put their needs first and think about what do they need in their journey to me? Like, what are those steps? That is a great way to be able to put out content. What do they need? Okay. Let me think about that. And then you can kind of unpack it that way. Yeah, absolutely. And that comes back to your rep acronym, which I love. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's talk about um, one of the, my favorite questions <laughs> is, is along this journey that you've gone through um, and, and other people are following you, things happen to us along the way and uh, things that we never expected. So sometimes it's personally, sometimes it's business related. Um, but what is something that has happened to you that you're like, wow, I never even expected that. Oh, like a global pandemic? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, kind of like that. <laughs> it comes to the top of my mind for some reason. Oh, I don't know. There's um, a, I never thought, I never thought that I would ever have a digital marketing agency. That's for sure. But I, that's the kind of deeper than that. I think that once I had my son, I realized, you know, I'd been working for other people, just in a regular job. And I always thought I'd probably go back to work in some capacity. But it was like that moment where I, I was staying at home with them at that point. Um, and that I should have gone back to work because I needed the money. Like we had a dual income family and, you know, suddenly I'm not working and we, you know, we needed to. But it was that really defining thing that I was like, I am not going back to work and not that it's bad, but for me personally, like I wanted to be home with my son. Like I knew I wanted to be home with my son and especially at that age, you know, newborn to, to wherever. And it was like, I didn't even know what I was going to do. I didn't even know, like I did, I didn't, all I knew was that I had to figure out how to make money from home somehow. And so as you know, the marketing thing came in and I was like learning how to do all this digital marketing, I was like, Oh, I could do this from home. That's amazing. Like, I never thought that that could happen. I certainly never thought that I could have a six figure business working from home. It was like mind blowing, you know, to me to think about, uh, about that. And, and so, and that's what kind of made me want to create Biggity Bomb Mom, right? It's because there's tons of moms out there that want to be able to stay home with their child, but they don't know what's available. Like the first thing that, you know, was always in my mind, like, oh, I want to work, uh, a work at home opportunity. Well, like network marketing would come to mind or something. And I'm like, well, I don't really want to do that. Like, okay, I could do something small. And it was always like little small trivial thing that I would like little job type of things. But we live in a world right now where we have a computer and internet. There are so many things that you could do to work at home, you know, and be a, a work at home mom and make money. Like you could be a social media manager. You could be a virtual assistant. You could be, oh my goodness, you could be a copywriter. You could run Facebook ads. You could do... Instagram ads, you could create Pinterest boards for clients. They love that stuff. And it's amazing the opportunity that's really, really out there. So uh, yeah, I mean, if you're looking for something to do at home. I, uh, oh my gosh. I love that. You, you just, you even surprised yourself, like the bigness <laughs> of what you can do. Yeah. I, I love that. Like totally empowering. And now here you are helping other moms do exactly the same thing. And especially now. Yeah. So yeah. apropos. <laughs> I mean, now it's like work has changed as we know it. You know, before all this, I never thought I'd see my son on a Zoom. That was a huge change for me. This pandemic is that I never thought I could be one of those moms that homeschools. And I still am like, oh, my God, am I going to be one of these moms that homeschools? <laughs> <laughs> 
but we're going to try it. And it wasn't ever a thought in my mind. I would talk to people that had businesses and, and homeschooled and I would think, I would look at them like they had four heads. Like, how is that even possible? And then once, you know, here it is, you're thrown into something that you have to figure it out. And oh my gosh, now I'm kind of like, wow, I love not getting up at 6.30 in the morning and rushing them off to school and doing this. This is amazing. And that trade, that freedom, you know, and, and having him here and being like, okay, I think we can do this. And that's a big change. So yeah, I think that this pandemic, even though it's been obviously very stressful and so exhausting for so many in the quarantine, it's, it's also, there's so many, so much opportunity that's going to come from this. I mean, whole businesses are going to be reimagined. The way that you reach clients is completely reimagined. I mean, people are now doing virtual classes and and a whole other arm of their business that they would have never had if they had not run into adversity that forced them to do this, right? So that's really neat. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the power of just doing it. And then I guess being surprised by what you can do. Uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, being, being surprised that we'll never, we'll never cease to stop amazing ourselves. I think that's like kind of a really neat thing. But it goes back to just start. That's why you got to just got to do it. Just go start. Do it. <laughs> and you'll be amazed. All right. Is there anything else that you would like to recommend to anyone running a business in terms of um, your content uh, in any respect, actually? Yeah. Um, well, I think if you're out there and you're just kind of searching whether you have a business or you don't have a business and maybe you just need to know kind of the steps, um, I do have like a free five-step framework. You can find it on my Facebook page. Well, it's right there on my Facebook page at uh, facebook.com forward slash I-M-E Goosage, I-M-E-E-G-U-S-I-C-H. And it's just a simple worksheet, but I think it lays out like Here's your five-step framework on the, the things that you need in order to set up your marketing correctly. And that's a good start. But really, like, there's so many great, so much great information out there. It's like, just find what your passion is and what you want to do and go find somebody, a, a mentor, a Facebook group, a something where you can latch on to and start digging in to learn because that's going to help so, so, so much. Absolutely. Yeah. And you just mentioned Facebook. Um, is there any, is that the best place for people to find you online or is there anywhere else we should send? Um, yep. I also have a YouTube channel where I have different videos um, that I do weekly, usually weekly videos on, on uh, all kinds of different things, digital marketing. And that's youtube.com forward slash I me goosage. Um, same thing on Instagram. I'm sorry. It's biggity bomb mom. So our Facebook group, biggity bomb mom or YouTube channel, YouTube dot com forward slash I need goosage. So you can just awesome. dig in there. <laughs> well, I will make sure that all those links are included in, um, in this listing here as well. And, uh, and we'll see, just follow you and uh, all you moms who are out there contemplating yeah. what to do and what you can accomplish. Definitely go yeah, follow Miss Amy. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for being on. I really appreciate your time. And uh, this was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Thank you, Jennifer. This is so awesome. Thank you for having me on. And uh, yeah, like happy to help in any way I can, anytime. <laughs>